Yo, what up? Tim Warner here, and today I'm going to teach you how to use prompt files in GitHub Copilot and in particular in Visual Studio Code. Now, if you use LLMs or large language models, you're probably familiar with custom instructions. And in another YouTube video, I'll teach you all about how to implement custom instructions in GitHub Copilot. But those are typically going to serve as global defaults for your chats. The idea of the prompt file gives you a much more granular and specific prompt that you can reuse. That's the value proposition. Let me show you how to get started here. In the GitHub Copilot chat pane, now we're assuming that you've got VS Code, you're licensed for GitHub Copilot, you've installed the GitHub Copilot chat extension, you've authenticated, you're ready to rock. We can bring out our chat here, and then using the gear, the configured chat gear, we can select prompt files from the list. Now I already have a couple defined here, and standard rules apply. You can click it once to edit it, you can copy or move it to a different scope, you can rename it, or you can delete it. Now if you don't have any, this will be an empty list. Let's click New Prompt File, and we're asked, do we want the prompt file to live in the repo? And if we do, it's going to be stored in your .github config folder under a subfolder called Prompts. Alternatively, you can put it in your user profile settings. As you can see here on Windows, that's going to be User App Data Roaming Code User Prompts. And the beauty there is that it will, the prompt file that is, will travel with you when you use Settings Sync. So regardless of where you get to VS Code, as long as you've got Settings Sync enabled, you've got your prompt files. So these are going to be reusable, very specific and granular prompts that are going to, at the end of the day, save you from having to copy and paste or just retype the same prompts over and over and over again. So I'm going to create a new prompt file. I'm going to store it in user data. And let's see, I'm going to call this prompt file GitHub branch naming, and I'll press enter after I confirm. Okay, now the way this works is we can just start to type or it'll give us a noom. See the highlighting? This is a VS code trick that enables you to quickly tab through fields. First of all, we've got mode. We specify the mode in which the prompt file will be invoked. And notice that it picks up not only the three built-in modes in GitHub Copilot VS Code, but also any custom chat modes that you might have created. I'm going to set this one to show up in ask mode. Now, the docs here don't really keep up with reality too much, so notice that this sample or this skeleton just has mode in the YAML header, and then we have our custom instructions down here underneath the header. But there's actually more to it. So notice I can do model and I can get access to any models that I have access to in GitHub. In this case, maybe I find that I get the best GitHub branch naming when I'm using GPT-4.1. And then, like I said, we could specify down here our specific instructions such that whenever we're in ask mode, we'll use GPT-4.1 and it will sub in the prompt. Now, I'm just literally letting GitHub Copilot fill in the gaps, and I'm pressing tab as I'm going forward here just to give us something to look at. And then I'm going to save my changes, and now I've got myself a new prompt mode. How do you access the prompt modes? Well, the other way to go with prompt modes is to store them in the repo. And as you can see, I've got two that I've created here that are fairly well fleshed out. I've got one called Azure Bicep Resource Prompt. These are, in fact, MD Markdown files. In this one here, I've added some additional mat metadata in the heading, including a description. This example generates production-ready Azure Bicep resources following Microsoft's cloud adoption framework and their verified modules patterns. And I've got a very rich and robust set of markdown conventions here, including common prompt engineering techniques like role assignment. You're an expert Azure infrastructure architect. You ascribe to verified modules and cloud adoption framework. I've got another one here for PowerShell automation that generates production-ready PowerShell 7 scripts following Microsoft best practices. Now, this is huge. Look at how many lines I've got in here. Now, you don't have to write Moby Dick. You can get a flying head start by going out to the GitHub Awesome Copilot repo. This is a public repo in GitHub. It's in the GitHub org. It's called Awesome Copilot. And as you can see, we've got chat modes, instructions, prompts, and scripts. Let's go into prompts. And this 
is going to give you hopefully a really nice short path based on your use case. There's one for Azure cost optimization. There's architecture blueprinting. There's a lot that are specific to different dev stacks, like one here for the .NET best practices. It renders the markdown here, but you can go to raw to see what the source looks like. And again, you can customize and do an override here. If you don't specify a model, then GitHub Copilot will use whatever your currently selected model is. Otherwise, it'll switch to it. Good. Let's close all. And now in GitHub Copilot chat, how do you actually invoke one of these prompt files? Well, you use the forward slash. You do the slash command syntax. So if I do forward slash Azure, notice that we get an immediate autocomplete for Azure Bicep Resource. And notice that the file name there is the name of your prompt file dot prompt dot md. And let me repeat one more time for the record. You can have these prompt files go in the repo under dot github prompts or you can put them in your settings JSON to have them available to you. I'm going to press tab and I'm going to say create me an Azure storage account in my Azure Pass subscription. Now the model might need more information. I could provide my default context in that prompt file as well. And notice that I'm in agent mode, but I've got GPT-4.1. Let me switch that to Sonnet, say, 4 instead, and let's send this prompt in and see what happens. Notice that the chat was replaced with follow instructions in the markdown file, and then I have my user prompt. And we can see that GitHub Copilot used one reference. That's going to be my code generation instructions. And then it looks like it needs some additional information here. What did we have in the file? Let me go up to the very top. I mentioned Claude Sonnet 4, and that's actually what I wanted to use in this context. Let me again, I'm trying to force an override. Let me do forward slash Azure Bicep again. I'm going to say, give me the Bicep template with variables declared at top. I'll substitute real values later. Use placeholders. So again, the value proposition is that you can ask the AI to do what you need it to do, and all of the surrounding best practices and your team requirements and everything else are being injected via that prompt file. That's the main value proposition that we have here for us. Now, sometimes we're early days with this. In fact, prompt files, if you go to the Visual Studio Code docs, it'll tell you in this article on prompt files that it's experimental feature. So who knows? Maybe it won't even be around in six months. I wanted it to create the file. Now, I could actually prompt and say, go ahead and create the file because I am in agent chat mode. But I'm going to come up here and I'm going to use the controls that VS Code gives us to insert this into a new file. And I'll quickly save it in my repo root. I'll call it storage account. And it's going to be saved as a bicep file by default anyway. So cleaning up, how do we sweep up the shavings here? As far as maintaining your prompt file, over time, we can come back up to the gear. And like I said before, you can modify these by giving it a click, or we can come back to prompt files. And if we don't want it anymore, this one again will be removed from user data. We can click delete, confirm delete, and now we're good to go. I hope that you found this lesson helpful. I really enjoy teaching generative AI, and I'm a huge fan of GitHub Copilot and Visual Studio Code. Let me know what else you'd like to see in the comments. Like, subscribe, etc., etc. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.